The S&P 500 and Nasdaq closing at record highs today, while the Dow dropped 130 points as investors await tomorrow's CPI report and Fed decision. For more, let's bring in Stuart Kaiser, City's head of equity trading strategy. Stuart, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, you, you say stick with the momentum in this market. It should keep going higher. Do you feel like embedded in that is really a call in NVIDIA? I mean, <laughs> that's what it feels like these days. Yeah, I mean, look, the way the performance has been, it's hard for the equity market to work without large cap tech working. I mean, it's 30 percent of market cap, and it's where the thematic and, and the kind of flows are. But, you know, our view is, generally speaking, you run long equities until the labor market starts to show, like, real meaningful weakness. Um, when that happens, I think you get out quick and you protect yourself. But we've been pretty resilient to the other data just on that kind of basic logic. What's the meaningful weakness? Essentially, you say that. Is it going to happen? See, I thought last year you'd start to see a significant rise in the unemployment. Didn't happen. We ticked four percent. The revisions month over have been bad now for the better part of a year and a half. What does that look like to you? Like, what number is that threshold? I, you know, it's a great question, because if you look back to last year, we printed 105 on a revised basis in October. We had claims up to 260. I, I think you probably need payrolls sub 125K at least and claims above 250. So those are the types of levels where even though that's not recessionary, the market will start to extrapolate that out and kind of increase the risk that it happened. But something like that, it might even need to be sub 100K. What's interesting is you actually historically have more negative payroll prints than you have prints between zero and 100K. The market doesn't hang out between zero and 100. And I think that's why if you got to that level, the market's just going to start the price, the chance you kind of step off the curb a little bit. So, Stuart, when you look at the volatile food and energy that's pulled out, don't you want to see the food and energy now? Because <laughs> they're actually lower in the last month or so. That might give a little tailwind to the deflationary aspect of that number. And where do you see the sell-off? If you do, on your, on your ascent to your levels, where do you see the sell-off happening? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, right now you want to see the food and energy because it happens to be lower. You know, three months ago, we probably would have been having the opposite discussion. But the bottom line is the Fed is focused on core, you know, so we're going to focus on core. I think if you got weak payrolls or you look like you're getting recessionary data, you want to get short that domestically facing cyclical. So that's going to be your small caps, uh, your banks, your retailers and things of that nature. So I think that's what people are targeting. I would say the two areas that people are most concerned about would be U.S. consumer because it's been labor market and consumer spending and that kind of been the white nights of the economy. So you need to see weakness there for a recession to really emerge. And the second would be anything that's kind of susceptible to higher for longer. So I think those are the two kind of weak spots. So in your view, so you're saying stay with the momentum. What's your what is your expectation for what the Fed does? Look, I think tomorrow, we're pretty positive on tomorrow. Our economists have like 20. Positive means you think they lower? We think, we think positive, no, positive for equities. So we think it'll be a positive catalyst for equity markets. And the logic being core CPI, we have 26 basis points, and our economists have directly flagged downside risk to that number. Generally speaking, Powell has kind of skewed more dovish than the committee itself. So you'd assume the press conference, to the extent he can be, will kind of drift a little bit dovish. Friday probably limits that a little bit. You know, when you put that wage inflation where it was, when you print such a strong payrolls number, right. they can't go outright dovish. But, you know, the view is that there is a risk to the downside on inflation, which should be good for equities. And the Fed itself could could tilt a little dovish. The risk there would be the... Uh, the revision to their economic projections. They're probably going to take up the, the inflation assumption within there. So there might be a little risk around that. But otherwise, you know, as the economy goes, go equities, and, and that data continues to come in pretty good. So there was a better-than-expected 10-year auction. And I'm wondering if you think, do you have any sort of conspiracy theory <laughs> um, embedded in that, in that, you know, maybe traders are sniffing out, like, softer CPI, and so Fed goes dovish, more, you know, the cuts get pulled forward. You know, it could be our, our our inflation traders think there's actually a pretty tight expectation around core CPI tomorrow. We had a call this morning and they had it between like 24 and 28 basis points. So the market seems fairly confident that we're going to get a, a solid to slightly low print. So that could that could explain part of the auction. That does kind of open up some risk reward, though. I mean, when everybody's kind of coalescing around right. a positive outcome, you, you definitely definitely need to kind of monitor that and keep and keep an eye on it. Uh, the auctions in general have been, you know, a bigger focus for equity markets the last six to nine months than yeah. they have been probably for any time in the last 20 years. So seeing good news on that, equity folks are probably going to say, oh, the bond market knows mo more than us anyway. So if that went well, then we might as well just keep buying stocks. <laughs> All right, Stuart, great to see you. Thank, Thank you. you, Stuart Kaiser. What do you think, Dan? Um, to use an expression that guy likes to use, it, it seems like a lot of investors are really focused on Goldilocks situation. I've um, never used that term. 
ever on this show. Gobble, and gobble. Saying, no, she's, see, they're just saying. <laughs> no, no, but all right. So, so all right, guy doesn't use that. So, so you know, weaker data uh, means greater probability of rate cuts and stronger data. Um, you know, we're still just doing fine, higher for longer. Risk assets have done pretty well. The economy keeps chugging along. And I just think that probably there's got to be something in between that. We really haven't had any fear put in the market. It's been over, you know, a year since we've had a down 2% day in the SPX, you know, and you think about we haven't even had a 10% sell-off in uh, since SVB, you know, uh, a year and a half ago. So it just seems there's a lot of complacency right here.